Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for episode 1 of season 1. I'm super excited to be talking about Superman Lois, the latest CW DC TV show. Obviously, we're going to be breaking it down week by week, so please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any DC TV videos as we move forward into Superman and Lois. So, yeah. Wow, what a first episode, an hour and a half-ish long because it is an extended episode because it's the two-hour premiere event. Currently, they are airing the second part, which is the documentary part of it. And I'm sure there's going to be some interesting stuff. They promise to tease what's to come next in Superman Lois. You can have some interviews. Also, in today's episode, it was really interesting because they dropped a new look at Stargirl. I'm going to be making a video on this probably tomorrow because this means that a Supergirl trailer might be coming very soon because they just released new Stargirl footage. So yeah, there's a lot to look forward to so please be sure to not miss out on any videos by clicking the notifications button if you're subscribed already. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into today's episode. So it starts off with Clark recalling how he got to where he is today and so I loved this opening. I thought this opening was so fitting for how the show should start basically. You know, you had all of these different elements that kind of added up. You have Kalel landing in the pod, you literally get to see him and land in there. His pod opens up and you see a baby Kalel. You see his parents, you see how Smallville was when he was growing up, and then you see how everything changed when his dad died and how that was such a big kind of impactful event on his life. And so it kind of shaped him to come and then obviously moving to Metropolis and then you see him becoming Superman for the first time. Obviously his mom knows about it and this old Superman suit is so cool because I did not expect to see anything like this. And this is a total callback to his original Superman suit. There is the very famous Superman image from the comics where he holds up the car. They literally did that. So I love that reference and I love that old suit because it's amazing. And so throughout this episode, there were a bunch of other Easter eggs. There was a Easter egg on the wall, which reads Cool Siegel, which is a reference to Jerry Siegel, who made Superman in the first place. So yeah, there was a bunch of cool Easter eggs. But anyway, so back to the opening. So it's like a whole montage of him becoming who he is today. And so Lois and Clark meet. They have this great romantic meet cute where they meet because Clark is coming in for a job at the Daily Planet and Lois is already a reporter and so it kind of sets up what's to come and you kind of get the idea that you know it's going to develop on from there and it does because Clark eventually they get together and then Clark reveals himself to Lois as Superman saying he's Kryptonian and everything and then they get married they fly up in the sky they have this great moment where they're kissing and so they grow a family together that is the next step and what a great opening was that, and the music is fantastic throughout this whole episode. I can't wait to hear more of it and to see more. But anyway, so you get to present day, they're with their teenage sons, and they're eating food in Metropolis in their apartment or house. And so Superman attends to a disaster. So this is at a nuclear plant where he meets Lois's dad, General Lane, who in this version is actually good. Normally he's played off as an antagonist, but in Superman Lois he's not played off as an antagonist. And so who has done this? Well, we'll get to that later because the nuclear plant stuff comes back. So then you go over back to their home and you have Jordan playing Injustice, which is obviously a funny Easter egg just, you know, being self-referential, being like, yeah, your son is playing with Superman on a video game, but obviously that video game is real. So I guess that's a nice kind of cool back to this being present day basically. And so throughout the episode it's clear that Clark is struggling with being a dad. He feels like he's not there enough and he isn't close enough to his kids basically. And so then he gets called by Martha, his mum, calls him up, checks on him and basically they go through it and they're like, yes, you're Superman so you can't be the same as every other dad. Which leads to a big point in the episode because basically Clark is feeling really guilty about not being there enough because he has his duties to the world as the world's greatest superhero. So he's not able to be there 24-7 for his kids and he hasn't been there. But later towards the end of the episode he makes a commitment to fully be there for them even whilst fighting the threats. And oh boy do the threats come in the form of the stranger 
an alternate version of a certain character, and that character is the stranger. So later in the episode, they have a fight, Superman and him, he's toying around with him, he's been using Kryptonian writing to call him out, to get his attention, and to basically be confronted by Superman. Because later on in the episode, after they have that cool fight in the space with very good CGI and everything, then it reveals right at the end, so you get to like the hour and a half mark, and like one of the final scenes of the whole episode is that he turns out to be none other than Lex Luthor. But he is a Lex Luthor from another Earth, and so it's revealed that his Earth was destroyed, and so this is definitely a big ramification of Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's been teased that this version of Lex was going to show up, but it's officially revealed at the end of episode 1 slash 2 because it's like a mix of both. So yeah, that's kind of a major shocking moment throughout this episode, that is one of the big reveals, and I'm super excited because he definitely got me hyped up, and the way that they portrayed him in the episode was great, and I can't wait to see what he brings because he's very menacing. And so I'm sure we're going to get back to talking more about Lex towards the end of this video, but first off, let's just go back and continue with where we're all going. So Lois thinks Jonathan has powers and so does Clark because, you know, he's in high school, in American high schools, a big thing is doing American football. Basically, he's very good and they are basically suspecting him of having powers. However, this whole time, they're not suspecting Jordan at all because of all his problems. And then this leads towards when they're actually in Smallville after the death of Clark's mum and their grandma. Basically, what happens is they go into the barn against their dad's wishes and a pile of pipes fall on them. And everyone thinks it's Jonathan. Everyone thinks that Jonathan was the one that saved them from those really heavy pipes. And the fact that he fell 30 feet was probably a big signifier, like Jordan said, and it wasn't just that Jonathan was there to protect him. While Jonathan may have powers, it was because Jordan is the one who has powers, because you get this whole thing later in the episode where he literally freaks out, and it's revealed that Jordan is in fact the one with powers. So with this, they are totally setting up Superboy. I mean, this is 100% the thing that they're trying to lead towards because that is a big thing in the comics. Obviously in the comics, it's normally Jonathan Ken who becomes Superboy. So that's why we were all suspecting that he would be the one to get powers and he would be the one to become Superboy. However, they've switched it around It's Jordan. And yeah, it was a great reveal and he's completely mad because they're getting beaten up in this one scene and he uses his heat vision and it was crazy. Kind of lost my mind at that scene. I'm sure most of you guys did. Let me know what did you think about that in the comments down below. Also, I spotted another Easter egg, which was on a news report on the TV. There was Schuster Mines, which is a reference to Joe Schuster, the co-creator of Superman. So, like I said, you can go back into the episode, find a bunch of Easter eggs and you'll still be digging for a while because they definitely have done a big deep dive right here. And so moving on to the other stuff, so you have Morgan Edge, who hasn't been introduced yet, but I suppose he's going to come back in in episode 3, so next week. And so Morgan buys out the Daily Planet, Clark gets fired, a bunch of other people get fired, and so Morgan is kind of linked to everything, and he's buying out places even in places like Smallville, so he's going to be coming and he's going to be preying on Smallville as well as Metropolis and all of the other enterprises he has, and so he's going to be one of the kind of villains of the season. I think he's going to be more of a villain for Lois and Clark when he's Clark, so not really a villain for Superman maybe, but maybe he gets somehow involved in the Lex Luthor stuff. So we'll have to wait and see. But like I said, Clark's mum, she gets taken ill. She has a stroke and unfortunately she dies. And this leads everything to go to Smallville. And you get the introduction of the Cushings. So old family friends. You have Sarah who shines in this episode. She has a lot of time. And she has a few great moments with Jordan specifically. Even though it kind of leads to a fight later in the episode. And so it seems like... Also, you have Lana who had some sort of relationship with Superman in the past and they're all friends and there is some tension there and also there are some differing views and it kind of builds up some stuff that's definitely going to get answered throughout the next few episodes. 
And so, moving on, like I said, throughout this episode, they are suspecting that Jonathan is the one who has powers. He's basically going to become Superboy, it seemed like, earlier in the episode, as he saves Jordan, supposedly. But, like we mentioned, this is not how it turned out. And so, Jordan, after this event, is worried about how they're fine. And Jonathan isn't very scared, and Jordan wants to find out what it is. And so, Jonathan just says a bunch of weird stuff and I don't know the one takeaway I have from this episode but this happens in a lot of American TV shows they always say weirdo and freak I don't know those words just kind of don't go well for me but that's just like one tiny gripe and I can look over it but anyway let's go back to Metropolis and to the Superman action because we have this nuclear stuff going on and so you have General Lane who is definitely a big advocate for Superman over him being Clark Kent or anything because he is a huge advocate and he obviously needs his help to keep control of things and so I feel like Tyler does such a good job as Superman obviously we knew he was a good Superman before but now he's getting his own show it's kind of exciting because it's a spin-off of Supergirl and you know he's been in crisis he's been in most of the recent crossover events so it's kind of nice to see him and Lois be involved in their own show kind of getting their own origin stories which is exciting obviously we've seen versions of Superman before but it's cool to see him here so anyway this supposedly Kryptonian villain writes in Kryptonian sends a message to Clark which reads in Kryptonian you are not a hero so this is obviously a big thing because it aggravates him and he knows that he's been targeted well you know Superman knows he's been targeted by the stranger that is what we're going to be calling him, and obviously he turns out to be Lex, but he is the stranger version of Lex, he's from another Earth. And so back in Smallville, they decide to stay in Smallville, but later in the episode they have the talk, and Jonathan and Jordan are very suspicious, and so they go into the Forbidden Shed, and they find Clark's Kryptonian ship. Jordan touches the pod, and it ejects some sort of crystal, I guess it's some sort of Kryptonian crystal, and it reacts to his touch. Obviously, that would only work if a Kryptonian touched it. So, again, this was another teaser for Jordan having powers. So, I'm not sure what would have happened if Jonathan touched it, but if it's by how Kryptonian technology has worked in past Superman stuff, it's normally you have to be Kryptonian and you have to have, like, strong Kryptonian cells to access stuff like that. And so, when they're down there, they find the ship and then Jordan confronts his dad and so does Jonathan he follows shortly behind and this is the point where Superman reveals that he's Superman in front of his kids and so he reveals he's not from Earth he reveals he's got powers he landed here in a pod and he was taken in that's why he lived in Smallville and basically he reveals everything tells them yes I'm from Krypton basically telling them yes you're half Kryptonian and so as evidence to show that he is who he says he is he lifts the car which is a major moment for the kids because they realize oh crap my dad is Superman and basically they start freaking out so that freak out consists of oh you lied to me and everything like that which we knew was coming because we saw it in the trailer but I guess it's to be expected because that's what happens a lot in these shows people get very annoyed when people lie I don't know about you guys but if it was me my dad revealed that he was Superman, I would be like, hell yeah, that is cool. Well, they're kind of like that towards the end of the episode, so I think they're coming around to it. And so moving on to the next point in the episode, Superman hears something. He suits up and he meets the stranger, obviously with the approval of Lois, who is like, yes, go be Superman. Even though you're needed as father, you still have to do your duty as Superman. And so I really like the kind of supporting act that both Clark and Lois do to each other because it's a fine balance they strike, I feel like. Yes, it feels kind of more like a Superman show, but without Lois, it wouldn't be full. So I think it's perfect that it's called Superman Lois. And obviously, Lois is a better parent as of right now. Obviously, Clark is going to work on that, but it's very obvious that she's very good at being a mum. And so Superman goes to confront this mysterious, maybe Kryptonian villain, who is the stranger, and so he knows Superman can't see through lead, they have a talk, and it's seemingly inside his head. And this was one of my favorite scenes throughout the episode because it really, really got into the kind of action, you know, between this villain and Superman. And yes, there was a fight scene, which was cool. They shoot up into space and everything like that. But the most interesting thing is it reveals 
he knows he's Kal-El and you're like what the hell is happening here how does this villain know that Superman is Kal-El so the stranger reveals at this point that he's from another planet where they were once rivals they were really strong rivals so obviously that can hint towards a certain villain that being Lex Luthor of course which he is revealed to be towards the end of the episode but then he talks about how his planet was destroyed like I mentioned earlier 100% crisis on infinite earths destroyed his planet and he was displaced and he turned up on earth prime and so they fight they fly up in space like I said the CGI is great they have this cool battle they land in Chinatown in Metropolis they proceed to fight and at one point he gets stabbed by the stranger with a kryptonite dagger and Superman falls from the sky and then kind of cuts to black and then it comes back and he saves himself and this is with the help of Lois. So there are a bunch of really cool scenes like this throughout the episode and I think you know the action with Superman is just great and I think it's some of the best that we've seen in a long time and so I'm super excited about all of this. Also earlier in the episode there was a reference to Superwoman which obviously didn't mean actual Superwoman but the fact that they call Martha Superwoman I thought was really interesting and I'm very interested to see if a version of Superwoman shows up or like a different version of Supergirl maybe like Power Girl from another Earth considering that they're introducing this different version of Lex Luthor the stranger from another planet what happens if you get another version of Supergirl who isn't played by Melissa but played by someone else and is a completely different character and so moving back to Smallville with Jordan and Lana Lang's daughter obviously that is Sarah so they strike a bond and then they're at a party and things go to hell as after they describe their experiences which are pretty similar and how things change around Smallville especially with parents at a certain age Jordan proceeds to make a move on her and then all breaks loose when her boyfriend who wasn't revealed before this finds them kissing and so things break loose and yes they get into a fight and this kind of parallels with Superman and his fight up in space and in Metropolis so both fights continue to run parallel and then it all breaks loose when Jordan shoots out heat vision from his eyes and I freaked out because you know we were all expecting Jonathan to be the one with Superboy powers but it turns out to be Jordan and I'm interested to see if Jordan actually becomes Superboy because he's totally set up for it and I'm interested to see if Jonathan actually turns out to be Superpower because it would make sense if he gets powers as well but maybe it's just later on and so after all of the chaos is finished Jordan has shot his heat vision out he realizes that he has powers Jonathan realizes that his brother has powers and then at the same time you have Superman who is able to survive his fall back down to earth so then Clark proceeds to return to Smallville and at this point he realizes he should have told his kids much earlier about him being Superman a long time ago and he realizes what his mum and her message meant because he realizes what she maybe meant was for them to start a new life and return to Smallville and basically raise their kids there obviously they're now teenagers but that's what she thought was best and so they decide to do this and they seem pretty happy by the end of the episode and just before the episode ends it reveals that they are taking over the farm they're going to be properly living there Sarah has a nice moment with Jordan and then they announce to the kids that they are gonna stay here so it seems like for now apart from Superman occasionally popping to Metropolis to do his superior duties obviously with this version of Lex Luthor well it seems like at the end of the episode he's out near the Fortress of Solitude somewhere he's gonna have to return quite a few times at least and for the Kemp family it all ends in a very optimistic note as the kids ask about him being Superman they have a million questions they want it all answered and so it seems super optimistic and it was a great end to the episode obviously after this it proceeds with the Lex Luthor cliffhanger revealing that the stranger is in fact Lex Luthor in his lair which is covered by snow so like I theorized about just a second ago possibly close to the North Pole but yeah what an episode there was so much going on this video turned out to be nearly 
20 minutes long because there was so much to talk about. So hopefully you did enjoy the video and hopefully you stuck around to the end. We have 30 more episodes to go. So there's going to be a lot more coverage. And if you guys have any theories about Superboy and what's going to be happening with Jordan, let me know in the comments down below because we're going to be talking about it and we're going to be theorizing about all of this. Remember, episode two comes out next week. I'm super excited. But also along with Superman and Lois, The Flash is back. And so The Flash is going to be back before then. And so I think the way that my videos are going to work is I'm going to release my Flash video straight away in the evening. And then I'm going to wait till like later in the next day. And I'll release my Superman Lois review slash breakdown along with my Flash trailer breakdown. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Crazy times. Super excited to have the DC TV shows back. Such exciting times. So don't miss out on anything. Subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos. But for now... I'll catch you guys later, goodbye.